This is the Norris Group's Real Estate Investor Radio Show, the award-winning show dedicated to thought leaders shaping the real estate industry and local experts revealing their insider tips to succeed in an ever-changing real estate market. Hosted by author, investor, and hard money lender, Bruce Norris. What's, what's really interesting about that dynamic in Florida is that, once again, you have uh, do you know what percentage on a normal year new versus existing homes? Would it be 2080 or? Uh, I want to say that, well, on a normal year. Yeah, normal yeah, year. Normal year, not the last couple of years, but yeah, normal year, you're you're pretty close to a 20% spread. New house. 80-20. Okay. So, yeah, you can imagine. So the 80% side that supplies is not 80 if you're talking about, let's say, number of houses, if the normal supply was 20 from the builder and 80 from this side, this side is not tossing 80 out. I don't even think it's tossing 40 out. It's tossing uh -huh. 25 out. Yeah, that's probably, and that's interesting that we're talking about this because that's actually what I talked to my team about yesterday in one of our meetings is I wanted to see the stats to know what is the amount of inventory coming on the market in relationship to what is the amount of inventory being sold that's new construction. There. Uh, so uh, they're they're shooting to have me that by middle of next week to have all of those items lined out. So I'm, I'm anxious to see that. Once I get it, I'll shoot it over to you. The new build percentage in California, which is was historically terrible, uh, usually on a in a boom cycle, end of a boom cycle, 150 thousand new homes, 450 total sales. So a third. That's a that's a normal uh, end of the boom cycle. So. 2021 22, 60,000 new homes constructed, 400 and say 40,000 sales total. So it was only 15% of the whole market. Well, now you're down to below 240,000 sales and you're building a 60,000 homes. And there's no inventory that's that there's no, no glut of inventory pushing prices down very much. So the this side is now maybe. 70% of the market and and going down. So I I get emails from the people that are flippers there and it, sort of like what you were saying a few weeks ago all of a sudden it kicked in maybe the interest rates you know went down to where it was a 5 and change at the top or something. Right. Uh, and all the guys sell, sending me an email is going um San Diego's just on fire. Um everything's multiple offers and it kicked in because of, you know, uh, they didn't have a lot of inventory. <laughs> John Burns, you know, that name, the guy that's the consultant. Uh, yeah. He just, he emailed me the same day and said, uh, uh, housing crash over <laughs> basically it's, it's cranked again. So, but I do think that existing inventory probably will have a hard time showing up unless there is a major pile of that homes that has to, has to get sold. And that would mean you lost your job. Well, so interestingly, I, I, I talked to three of my friends that, that don't work for me that sell outside, you know, resale real estate. And one of them is this top producer for his firm. Uh, he He's closing on average uh, about 20 homes a month right now. So oh my gosh. Wow. He, he, he him and his team do volume. Uh, but out of that, uh, what he was able to tell me just last week is a little over 85% of his sales that he's creating are generated because the homes, the people are moving out of the area because they've transferred because of work. Right. That makes it, sense. It's, it's not because they want to sell. As a matter of fact, they're, they're frustrated and struggling because he said, Craig, as I'm talking to them, they're going into different markets and they're buying stuff. They, they, can't buy anything for the value of what they had in their home. And as you said, you know, they, he said, most of them had taken advantage and re refied somewhere in that two to three mark. And now they're looking at, at a seven rate. Yeah. And, and he said, you know, while, while the, the job shift is, is outweighing that to a degree, uh, they're still frustrated because they're like, man, we're, we're, we're taking a beating by giving up our home in that process because we could win at a different market cycle. Right. No, no doubt about that. So yeah, that I think that'll be a natural deterrent for how many homes come from 
come from where most of the inventory that's going to get sold comes from existing inventory. Right. It would take a while for the builders to catch up and say, oh, we're going to double how many homes we build. That's probably not an overnight thing. Well, this goes back to even the question you asked a moment ago or a few moments ago about what's the nationals doing. Uh, it, it's interesting because, you know, most of the nationals corporately are are starting to ease back their construction uh, and the amount of new starts they're doing, uh, even in Florida. Uh, you know, I've got friends in Jacksonville that they are uh, they 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 build in seven states. They're 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 a I think the top 20 builder in the country. Mm -hmm. uh, they are but they're not in southwest Florida. They come down as far as Ocala. Uh, they're pulling back dramatically the amount of new starts that they're doing. Uh, they're pulling back the amount of new sales that they're doing on pre-sales in Southwest Florida. Cause I got a small division here that they do. Um, but it's not because they're not selling. It's because they sold so much through these last two years, they still have a glut of material and product that they have to perform on that they can't perform on. Oh, wow. And and that's part of what happened with one of the large nationals here. It's a it's the one of the top four builders in the country. They were they knew they could perform about a hundred to one hundred and ten houses a month is what their ca capabilities of putting out in this market were. There were months they were selling just shy of three hundred a month. Oh goodness gracious! So they ran that for, you know, they were running those things for 11 to 12, 13 months at a time to where they were hitting those numbers. And so they're looking at the market saying, while yes, we can still sell, we're doing ourselves a disservice because we can't, we, we, we've got such a glut of things that we've got to perform on that we've already sold. Mm -hmm. At a price though, probably that they wish they hadn't. Well, interestingly, most of those, uh, you know, the 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 one builder had uh, uh, pricing structures in their contract that they're able to change the 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 price, and and you know the houses are still moving. So if someone walks for, from a contract because they can't afford the rate now or something like that, we're we're selling. I mean, we we unfortunately we had a, a buyer that due to when they went under contract, they could afford the the price and the rate at that time. You know, we. We did not have price escalations in our contracts. We for our 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 retail buyers, we locked those rates or, or we locked those pricing uh, to try to give some assurance through that time. But obviously, that's a retail price. It's right. not you know right. what we do with you. Right. But um, but in that we we actually lost. We only lost one person. But uh, that that it, when it came time, the rate was what knocked them out of it. Uh, but we we sold that house in a matter of a week or so. But um, it, it's interesting, you know. We just sold two on Saturday. I think I talked about that earlier. That that we got. A, I mean, it's exactly the asking price, the the terms we wanted. Uh, I think somebody needed a consent. One of them needed a concession on closing, and we ended up pricing up the the, the term on that to help cover it. So. It, the the market we're not seeing drops in our market from a price perspective uh it's a very stable market in this area right now because of lack of inventory what what's interesting about how you feel about a market when you come from euphoria it it impacts how you feel about normal <laughs> right so when you get done with a home a year ago it's a, it's available for 15 minutes and 11 people are giving you cash offers Right. And you and you get used to that. Yeah, that's right. the new normal. And then you go, you know, in your list of house and 24 hours passes and you don't hear anything. You're all bummed out. <laughs> yeah. When, when you know, when we go through a, a, a sales meeting every week and, and you saying, wait a minute, we, we've still got a house on there this week that was there last week. Why? Why is this? <laughs> <laughs> I know in the past, Craig, you've uh, you've mentioned that you you build you build homes for middle middle America and mm -hmm. you want people to be able to afford and to have that American dream adding to the um, to the lack of inventory, you know, around the country has been these wall street REITs and hedge funds buying up all, all kinds of homes for BTR, you know, built to rent. Right. Um, is, is that happening a lot in, in Southwest Florida and Florida overall? 
Uh, yeah, I, I would be uh, I would be remiss if I said it was. I mean, there, there's a lot of Wall Street coming in and looking because, again, they, they recognize what's going on in this marketplace. Um, that they, they recognize that, <laughs> that there, there's a need for housing here uh, and, and they're coming in and buying. Uh, now some of the parameters are changing, you know, they, 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 there, there are some things that they're looking at. I've got a, a friend of mine that, that we, my other company does some of the subcontracting work for them. Uh, some of those, some of those terms of how they buy is changing, but, but yes, there are, there are investment pools, wall street money, uh, PE firms that are, that are coming in very heavy and, and looking at, at, at this market and how this functions and what takes place in the market. I think, Joey, a lot of those funds are waiting for the uh, REO glut to show up, and it, it ain't, it ain't going to happen. <laughs> they haven't read your report? <laughs> well, we, we know that they're not the best timing experts, actually. That's kind of funny, but they're not. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's, they're more buying uh, tracks, right? You know, what we do is a scattered lot model. So it's a, uh, it's a little different. Is that correct? Yeah, you are correct in that. You know, we, we've got with our scattered lot, most of the wall street money does not look at, uh, doesn't like to look at scattered lot um, simply because for them, they're looking at how does their management process work? Uh, and so, you know, obviously with the partner that we've got in place down here with you guys, you know, through empire, uh, they do a fantastic job of lease ups, uh, of management of that. And, and they do a lot of specializing in that scattered lot and, and open policy. So our open product rather. So, uh, so that is, that is definitely different from what, what we do, uh, compared to what wall street is typically looking for in tracked product or, uh, you know, multifamily opportunities, things like that, because obviously for them, the management costs can change and, and the availability of how they manage is, is completely different. The demand for rental property, how, how has that still been? Um, matter of fact, I, I, I spoke with Empire and Joanna the other day on the two that I'm looking put in. She's expecting that she'll have somebody in, she will not just, she'll have tenants moved in inside of 14 days. Okay. So it's it's a little worse than the the eight days that she was a year ago, right? But what is the price difference from a year ago? I'm just curious. <laughs> exactly. Um, we are one of them is a 1723 model. Right. Uh, will be. I've got some in in a couple different locations because uh, I've got some in the Cape, and I'm I'm actually starting to put some in Lehigh. Uh, because we, we we're seeing a lot of different stuff happening there. A lot of people from Miami are starting to come over and move over uh, because they can travel, you know, 55 minutes and, and be at work and they can live for, uh, you know, a whole lot less than what they can live in Miami. Wow. Never thought about that. So they're, they're taking some of the back roads and coming in. So there's several areas of, of Lehigh that uh, that we're starting to build in and, and attacking that market. Uh, but you know, so depending on Cape Coral or Lehigh, that, that, uh, that 1723 model, uh, a two car, four bedroom, not a three car, but a two car with a four bedroom, uh, depending on Cape Coral or Lehigh, we're anywhere around 26 to $2,800. Uh, a, a year ago, we were in the low twos. And a year before that you were in, uh, 1650. Yep. 1650 to 1700 bucks. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's an incredible and see, that's also supportive of the monthly payment. So when oh, you yeah. take a look at, wow, I've got to rent this for 27. What's my, what's my monthly nut at four or three fifty or something at seven. Uh, you know, that's why I like practical decisions. So I run those numbers and say, if I was that family, would I rent or buy if the number was the same, I, I would buy. It's true. Right. I want my name on the deed. I want to be able to have a pet and whatever else I want, you know, so I can understand that. So I think the rent going up has actually been very stabilizing to the housing market. Yes. Yeah, it, it, it is. It has really had a play in that. Um, it, it's still interesting, though, and you and I've been talking about it. There, there are a, there are a lot of people. A matter of fact, we had three people that came into our showroom last week talking to us, do we have rentals? Uh, you know, so Douglas Brook Homes does not own rentals. You know, right. I, I have the, through my, through my private equity firm that we own our rentals. 
Um, you know, Douglas Brook Homes doesn't own them. And so, you know, my staff there said, no, Douglas Brook Homes doesn't do rentals. We talked through them for a few things, but obviously our, our job there is to sell homes. Uh, and all three of the people that were in specifically looking for rentals, they said, no, we, we, we just don't want to own homes. Wow. We don't want to deal with the maintenance. That's okay. part of it. And, and interestingly, one of them had moved from up north and they said, we don't want to deal with that. If we're moving here, when it gets to the weekend, we don't want to cut grass. We don't want to deal with if my water heater goes out. If if there, we want to, when we're done working, we want to go to the beach or we want to go play. We want we're there. So it's interesting to see as people are you know coming into this area from other areas of the country that the migration that's coming in from out of state migration they're coming in not just for you know a home or a you know cost of living but they're coming for a lifestyle. Mm-hmm. You know, and I know when we do our, our our boot camps, we talk about that, but the lifestyle is a real thing here. You know, it, it's it's, uh, and and so that's been it's been interesting to see what's going on with the rental market because people there's a there's a large section of the population that just don't want to deal with maintenance. So what's what's the lifestyle that you participate in? What what's the stuff that Craig Evans you know likes to do on the weekends? Uh, been participating. Well, you guys know me. I am a huge family man. So I, I am all about my wife and my kids. So, you know, when we, when we're off, I mean, we're doing stuff with our kids. We're, we're, but like this Friday, there, there's a thing in Fort Myers, which interestingly enough, Fort Myers, and I forget the publication, but it was just put out last week. Fort Myers was number two on the list uh, for places in America to, to live that were safe and quote unquote, according to national demographics throughout the country, affordable. Um, so, uh, you know, but we're like this Friday, we're going down and we're doing what's called art walk and they shut down two block or two streets on the, in the downtown of Fort Myers. They shut off, I mean, just probably a total of 10 blocks. Uh, there's bands, there's restaurants opening, there's street, you know, and it's just a, a good time where everybody goes and hangs out. Uh, my kids are actually, uh, or one of my daughters, her high school band is the jazz band is playing down there this weekend. So we'll go and we'll spend most of the day Saturday doing that. Then we'll watch her play uh, past that. We go boating a lot. I love to boat. Uh, we, a lot of golf, you know, we play golf on the weekends, uh, but there's some great parks here. It, it's just, a, it's a great place to live. Well, you and I were going to get, uh, we were going to have a conversation last night and I get this text. Um, I have a concert. <laughs> I got to go to at six o'clock. That's can, right. I, can I call you in the morning? So that's what that's, he's doing. <laughs> that's right. That's right. I, I didn't hear. I didn't hear baseball. What's what's going on? Spring training is all over Southwest Florida. Oh, it's it's all over the place down here. Yes, let me know when you want to come, man. I know you're a baseball <laughs> fanatic. <laughs> yeah, I've got to do that one of these days. All right. Well, we are uh, Bruce. Before we sign off, it sounds like you're about to sign off. Sign off. No, uh, I was going to say April. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh yeah, I, I want I want our audience to to hear something about the team that we have down there in Florida. You know, we we kind of touched on it briefly of what uh, you know what we did when Hurricane Ian came and the stuff that you and Craig did. You know, jumping on the boat and helping people out. What we didn't talk about and what not a lot of people know is that Craig and his team every day, almost twice a day, were giving us updates and 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 having all of us on their, you know, radar, like just didn't seem like it should be right because they had so much to worry about down there. You know, Craig's talking about, you know, Hey, uh, I, I don't have an update for you now. Give me a couple hours because I still can't find one of my employees, you know, stuff like that. Um, the stuff that he was doing with his church and, you know, it inspired our investors to get involved, you know, Craig, you know, I, I don't have a number because we, we weren't keeping track. You know, we weren't we weren't doing it to, to get this accolade at the end. But I know that a lot of our investors donated and sent things, you know, to the church that you're working with because of the stuff that you were doing. You know, and, and I, I, I have to t tell everybody that as soon as Craig and his team could and Joanna, too, Joanna, you know, they all went to every one of our properties, hundreds of homes and visited them as soon as they could to assess and put our minds at ease 3,000 miles across the country. And that's the type of team that we have um, in Florida. And that's that 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 goes a long way. And I, like, I got to tell you, and, and if my voice is shaking a little bit, it's because <laughs> I am emotional about it. 
You know, they didn't yeah. have to do that. They could have said, hey, buddy, like we're, we got a lot to worry about here. But no, we were able, I was able to give out every day for about 10 days after the holiday, after the holiday, the hurricane, um, I was able to update every one of our employee, uh, every one of our investors because of the stuff that Craig, Heather, and Joanna were doing on that end. Very cool. Well, yeah, and Joey, I appreciate that because it, it was it, it was crazy, and I, you know, Bruce, you saw a little bit of that, and uh, and 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 I'll say, listen to to the the people that you that that follow you, Bruce, and that follow what you do, and that are investors through the Norse Group, or just you know, follow what you do and listen to what you have to say. Uh, I, I know within the first probably two and a half weeks, uh, you know, I started getting calls from our church uh, saying, hey, who are these Norris Group people? Because <laughs> stuff would come in with somebody's name, you know, and it would say, attention, Craig Evans, the Norris Group, you know. And, and so they were asking me, who is this? Who is this? Who is this? There, there were pallets of uh, of items that were sent. Uh, I know gift cards that were sent to us, uh, you know, had amassed over about 10, 000, a little over $10,000 of gift cards that were sent to us that we took and went. And, you know, my wife, you know, was, was like, uh, hey, we got another $1,200 today. I'm like, go buy some stuff and take it and start getting it out, you know. So, uh, yeah, th- it was a it was a huge blessing of being a part of that and seeing that transpire. You know, we had another group that had put out a bunch of stuff as well. But it, it was it was you know, because let, let's face it, Joey. And Bruce can attest, I mean, coming up to that, we were coming out of a year and a half of getting our getting our tails kicked, you know, just one thing after another every week, labor this, price increase this, uh, can't get blocked for six more weeks. I mean, it was just like a never ending barrage that felt like was it ever going to end? Uh, you know, how do we how do we go from building houses in the time frame that we were to to you know, now we're in a 12 month build cycle. What is, I mean, it was, it was the most uncomfortable and foreign thing to us. Um, but to, to do that and then to, to see the, the outpouring from, you know, groups like you guys and a couple other people that we deal with, uh, that, that was a huge, huge thing to see that, you know, uh, but, but I, I will also say this as a shameless plug, our team has worked tirelessly and, and, uh, I, I think over the next probably 60 to 75 days, you guys will be pleased with some of the things that are coming out. Joey and I've talked a little bit of, about some of it. I, I don't, I'm always hesitant to, to say this is what it is, but you know, we're, we're, uh, we, we are seeing shifts in how our marketplace is starting to turn, especially from, from build cycles, things like that. So we're, we're getting very, very excited about what the next 90 days of our future looks like. That's great. Well, we look forward to bringing to you a group of, uh, I know this how this is how it works. We have past attendees come to uh, Florida boot camps multiple times, and then we have a new group that'll come, and that's right. uh, that's April 21st and 22nd, right? Yes, correct. All right. Yeah, we're we're looking forward to that. Now, it's, fortunately, it was, it was supposed to be originally the next week, but then uh, we've got some concerts and things going on the next week that I couldn't go. <laughs> oh, I thought it was uh, the opening of baseball season for Joey. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be gone by then. It'll be real baseball season by then. <laughs> All right. All right, Craig. Hey, thanks for, thanks for spending time with us today. Been a pleasure, Bruce. For more information on hard money loans and upcoming events with the Norris Group, check out thenorrisgroup.com. For information on passive investing with trust deeds, visit tngtrustdeeds.com. The Norris Group originates and services loans in California and Florida under California DRE License 01219911, Florida Mortgage Lender License 1577, and NMLS License 1623669. For more information on hard money lending, go to thenorrisgroup.com and click the hard money tab.